I'm Dr. Robert Hannon, the Senior Medical Director for Innovation at Nicholas Children's Hospital. I'm a pediatric cardiac surgeon by training. The cardiovascular surgery division in Nicholas Children's Hospital has a long history of innovation from revolutionizing the portable heart lung machine to publishing our results on the internet in real time to working now to impact and empower patients and families over the course of a lifetime with advanced technology. The technology we're using is borrowed heavily from industry, 3D printing, mixed reality, immersive technology to impact patients and their families to minimize the trauma of congenital heart disease and other diseases of childhood. For decades, we planned operations and educated parents and patients about their congenital heart disease and their operations using 2D line drawings on eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper. A very unsatisfactory way to illustrate very complicated three-dimensional anatomy. In 2013, we speculated that 3D printing of patient-specific, unique models of their individual heart disease would be useful for surgical planning, for patient and parent education, and in some cases, actually practicing the operation that we plan to do. So 10 years after we hypothesized that 3D printing might help our patients, eight years after we first printed our model, we printed hundreds of unique models for unique patients and thousands of models total. The ability to show a patient their anatomy, the ability to plan an operation, the ability to show donors what we're doing and how complex some of the issues that we face every day has been invaluable to us. We printed our first heart in January of 2015. Some of the things that we learned very soon printing these unique heart models was that we were able to turn patients who have been declared inoperable at other centers or by us into operable candidates. And when we talk about reaching those left behind by diagnosis, can you imagine the devastating news a parent hears when they hear that their child is inoperable or untreatable? We were able to take previously untreatable children and using the power of three dimensions, the power of touch, the power of our eyes, to turn those patients into operative candidates. One of those examples is a young boy named Roy who was found to have an osteosarcoma underneath his jaw. One center declared him inoperable. Another center said they could operate on him by removing a large portion of his cheek and reattaching it, leaving very, very visible scars. We were able to print his CT scans multiple times to show that preoperative chemotherapy had made it safe to operate on him, moving the tumor away from the major blood vessels to the brain. And then in a major collaborative multidisciplinary effort, our neurosurgeons and craniofacial surgeons collaborated to make an incision above his hairline and in his mouth and completely resect the tumor without any incisions on his face. His family is eternally grateful for the extra care that we went to, the extra effort that we went to, to not only completely resect the tumor, but have a fantastic cosmetic result in a third grader. So in 2016, we upgraded from single color, single material to the Stratasys J750, a half a million dollar instrument that allows us to print multiple colors, multiple materials at the same time, that enables surgical planning, enables patient and parent education. Again, through the charitable donations and the support of the foundations, we were able to upgrade the J750 with the digital anatomy module that allows us to cut and sew and actually practice operations on the exact patient's anatomy. And the software and the digital anatomy models enables thin things to feel like thin things and thick things like septums in the hearts to not be rock solid, but to be able to simulate actual material that we can cut and sew, that we can take our scissors, that we can take suture material and practice operations. It's an enormously powerful tool for surgical planning and surgical practice. In 2021, we were able to add another printer 
the J5 that allows us to maximize our workforce and our workflow to be able to simultaneously print a hard model and a cuttable, solvable digital anatomy model at the same time rather than having to convert from one printer type to another. And again, it's been enormously helpful for our workflow in a limited resource environment. So as we started in-house printing and we learned that we could operate on patients that many thought were inoperable, that we could achieve much better patient and parent education, we also learned the value of our collaboration with industry, that we can't do this alone, and that although the Stratasys printers are unbelievably reliable technically, there are many questions when you start printing. Which material should we use? Which printhead should we use? Our engineers have gone and really taken the Stratasys printers to the next level with the help of the technical staff and the administrative staff at Stratasys. The support we've gotten from Go Engineer has been invaluable. Again, the printers are very, very reliable, but the support in terms of planning what materials to use, how to go forward, has been invaluable to us not only in 3D printing, but in mixed reality, in segmentation, in all aspects of the innovation that we're using.